Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romances with characters who use mobility aids. If y'all don't know, I love shouting loud and proud about books with disability representation. So today I thought I'd talk about books with characters who specifically use mobility aids. I am a mobility aid user myself. Um, I use it on and off when I have to stand up for long periods of time. I use a walker with a seat, a seated walker. Her name is Betsy or Henrietta, depending on what day it is. My dad named her two names and he like changes them. <laughs> so it's either Henrietta or it's Betsy. It's either one. Okay. She has two names. We're fine. Um, anyway, so she sits in my car. She like her home is my car. She sits in my trunk. So if I need her at, like the grocery store or whatnot, places where I know I'm going to be standing for long periods of time. I have her there with me. So yeah, these are characters that also use mobility aids, which I'm really excited to talk about. I've talked about probably all these books before. They've been in previous disability representation videos that I have made. But yeah, again, we're just gonna be specifically talking about mobility aids here. So that would be wheelchairs, walkers, canes, whatever the case may be. Let's get into this. I have a few sections in here. So we're gonna be going by contemporary romances first, then I have some contemporary novellas. And then lastly, I have some historical romances as well. So first I have Not My Type by Evie Mitchell. My lovely friend Johanna from My Cozy Book Space sent me this book and another edition of it, which is so fun. Like, look, this is like a special edition of it. It is so pretty and pink, I love it. So our heroine of this story is a wheelchair user. She is the host of a podcast. It's called the All Access Podcast, where she basically highlights different things you can do in your intimate life, if you will, like to spice it up a little bit maybe, um, and to give advice, talk about things, especially in the disabled community. One person calls in and asks her advice for kind of like rote play. And she's like, I personally don't know all that much. So she goes out to research, find some information, and that's where she meets our hero who does rope stuff and he teaches her the ropes if you will and this is their romance it is so fun and sweet it's very short to the point but I loved this and I think Eva Mitchell did a great job with this representation also I just love this book too because the heroine has pink hair and then her wheelchair is also pink so that's why everything is pink on here. I of course have to mention my girl Frankie from Always Only You. Literally the cane is on the cover. Love it. Um, This is the romance between Ren and Frankie. Ren is a hockey player. So Ren has been hardcore crushing on Frankie for years, but he knows that she's not ready for a relationship. Um, So he's like, so he's patiently like waiting until she's comfortable and wants something. She's also autistic. So there's that representation. Um, Oh, I forgot to say she has <laughs> rheumatoid arthritis. So that's the representation here that is for our mobility aid. Ricky uses a cane to get around. Um, she kind of uses it as a wand also. Okay. The discussion of disability representation in here just made me sob. <laughs> like I love this book so much. Chloe did a great job with this book. And I just love Ren and Frankie's romance. Ren is everything to me. Frankie is everything to me. The two of them have to live together for a short period of time because Frankie's house gets broken into. And Ren is like, here, come stay with me while your doors and like windows are getting fixed. And because like it's dangerous to live in your house right now. So just come stay with me. And um, things happen in their forest proximity time together okay um it's so fun i love it so much this is like one of my favorite books of all time for a reason if you want a mafia book um we have this book this is painted scars by neva altaj the first book in her perfectly perfect series the hero was in a car accident um like a little while ago and he is now a wheelchair user but he is going through physical therapy to help him walk again he uses crutches to get around but he's primarily a wheelchair user but he is really hoping with the to have his ankle be, be able to walk with a cane. He's never going to be able to get his full mobility back to what it used to be, but he's like, I just wanna to get to the goal where I can walk around with a cane. And so he's going through like rigorous physical therapy to get to that point. So he's a mafia boss. And there are some people that might challenge him for his position because they view him as weak. And he's like, what can I do to show people I am not weak whatsoever. I'm just sitting in a wheelchair. Like I'm not weak at all. I need to show them that I am strong. So I'm gonna get married. He ends up blackmailing our heroine into marrying him. Her father is with, in some debt with the hero. Um, and so she ends up marrying him, even though they like hate each other, but he needs a wife. So it's their romance. I love this book. I love this series. It's so awesome. I really love the focus on physical therapy 
in here because I've been to physical therapy for my disability before, so I really love that. Another book that really highlights physical therapy in like an amazing way is Falling from the Sky by Serena Bowen. The hero of the story used to be an Olympic, I think snowboarder, if I'm correct. One day he was snowboarding, I think during a competition and he crashed and now he is not able to move from the waist down. Hallie is our heroine who ends up being one of his doctors in physical therapy and it's their romance. It's very forbidden because this is his doctor. He should not be in a relationship with his doctor. They should not be together, but they end up falling for each other regardless, despite the forbidden nature of it. I loved the discussion of physical therapy in here, especially with our heroine being able to be in her mind, who is a physical therapist and the hero doing like rigorous physical therapy exercises. I really related to him and how hard it is. Like the little simplest movement can be excruciatingly hard and painful, but like not painful in a bad way. And also just seeing loved Hank, the hero's journey and growing in his identity and who he is as a person. Um, because he's obviously devastated as to what happened and he can't really do the sport he loves anymore. He can't he can't play the sport that he grew up loving, but he can enjoy it and appreciate it in his own way. Next are three novellas that I would love to mention really fast. First is A Baby for the Outcast by Cassie Mint. This one is about a heroine who moves in with the hero. Um, he is disabled and he's not able to move around the house like he used to anymore, but he's a painter and he needs an assistant. He needs help getting some supplies and things around the house because he can't move as fast as he used to. The hero is like smitten with her heroine right from the get-go, but he doesn't want to make her uncomfortable or like make her scared of him in any way because he already thinks he looks scary. He has scars all over his body. But at night, he has a lot of dreams about her. And then one night, it's like thunderstorming outside and the heroine actually goes into his room to seek like some comfort because she's terrified. And they end up being together, you know? And the hero just wakes up the next morning she's not there and he honestly just thought it was a dream he was like that was like the best dream ever like he did not think that was real she's devastated that he's not like even acknowledging what happened anyway she finds out she's pregnant and he's like huh <laughs> like he did not he does not not compute with him like how this all happened he's like we've never been together i don't understand but then he realizes like all what happened he's like oh my gosh so anyway so our hero in here is disabled. He deals with chronic pain. I love a discussion of chronic pain in here, even for it being a novella, and he uses a cane to walk. Then I have Plain Love by Avery Kingston. Our hero in this book is a wheelchair user, and he is on an airplane to go to his best friend's wedding, and the heroine is the girl sitting next to him, and they end up like meeting and getting along, and then when they get to their destination, they realize that they're going to the same wedding, and then that is his best friend's sister. So it's a little bit forbidden because that's his best friend's sister. He's like, oh crap, I can't be with her. But yeah, it's great. Avery Kingston does a great job at like highlighting disabled voices. So I really appreciate this book. For that, I love Avery Kingston. And the last novella I'd love to mention is The Breakup Artist. This one is actually one you can listen to on Audible for free. If you have an Audible subscription, you can just listen to this, um, add it to your library. Um, our heroine in this story um, is a wheelchair user and she is also called like the breakup artist. She has like her day job or whatever, but she ends up getting a bunch of like emails and letters. No one knows that this is her though, like writing to the breakup artist asking like, here are all my problems with my relationship. I'd love to break up with this person, but I don't know how to word it. Um, so can you help me? And so she kind of like forms these emails and crafts these letters to help someone break up with somebody. Then she ends up meeting our hero who is a barista at a coffee shop she loves. He is so funny, so kind like she loves this guy like she has a crush on him okay um but then she quickly realizes like I think I wrote the breakup letter that was sent to you recently like she doesn't tell him that so there's like a secret identity aspect in here because she keeps her identity hidden but his girlfriend just broke up with him and he's like yeah there was this horrible letter she sent me talking about all this stuff and she realized oh crap like that was that was the letter I wrote <laughs> so um there is a little bit of secret keeping in here. So this was really fun. I really loved her heroine and like the representation that she had. And she again had a growth journey because at the beginning, the reasons for her like writing these letters was not the greatest, <laughs> um, but she ends up quickly realizing, oh, this is not a good idea. This really hurts people. And then I have three historicals. Let me grab them. These are them. I got all three physically. So first on the stack is how to entice an enchantress. Um, this is a romance with our heroine who despises the hero because like they were like really close friends. Um, but then he said something like really offensive and uh, she's not having him anymore. And so he goes to the heroine's godmother, who's a duchess, and is like, hey, can you help me win this girl back? Like, I put my foot in my mouth. Like, I just want a wife and I think she'd be a great wife. But then he slowly realizes that he's falling in love with her. He's actually a widower, 
Um, he was injured and he uses a cane now. He has scars all over his body as well um, because him and his wife were on this boat that exploded and his wife ended up passing away. And so he now walks with a cane. He has a limp. He deals with chronic pain. I really appreciated this representation. Anyway, he tries to woo the heroine <laughs> in this story while they're at a, um, what's it called? Like, oh, I forget what they're called, where you like go to somebody's house for a long period of time. It's like a party. Oh, I forget the name of it. There's a specific name for it. Please help me, historical romance lovers. Anyway, she's at her godmother's house, like the Duchess, to go there and the hero's there. And she's like, what is he doing here? And he's trying to woo her back. Then I have My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed, which our hero in this one is a wheelchair user. He got an injury and doctors told him he'd probably never walk again, but he does use his crutches. So there's also that representation as well. Um, our heroine is Kitty Danvers and she is the eldest of, I think, three sisters. And her sisters cannot go out to society unless the eldest is married or about to be married. And so she wants the best life for her sisters. She realizes she's never really going to get married. She's going to be a, um, a spinster. So she makes up this ruse that she's engaged to our hero, the Duke, because no one's seen him in years. Like they don't know what happened to him, don't know where he is. Um, so she just makes up this rumor to have her sisters have the life that they want. Anyway, the hero catches wind of this rumor and goes to a ball that the heroine's at and is like confronting her. Like, uh, who are you? Uh, we're not engaged and she imme immediately is like so apologetic she's like i'm so sorry i just wanted the best life for my sisters i will completely like like fix this don't worry and he's like wait 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 i i find you very intriguing how about we just keep up this ruse for a little bit let's just do it so i really love this one the hero is very like prickly but really spoon worthy at the same time and the last one that i have is a night to surrender by tessa dare um this is the first book in her spindle cove series this is about bromwell and Susanna, Susanna and her father created this town called Spindle Cove, which is a town that kind of like full of spinsters and women who just want like a break from society. And our hero got injured in war. He walks with a cane. He has a limp. He deals with chronic pain. He goes to Spindle Cove because he's been assigned to form a militia there. Problem is the town is mostly women. <laughs> so he's having to like form this ragtag militia filled with like unconventional men. <laughs> Like you got like 14 year old boys and then you got 60 year old men and then you have like, like it's so funny. Like these characters are so funny. This like militia men, so funny. I love them. Um, so this is their romance. It starts out with like a little bit of dislike on her part, starts with dislike, but then the hero is like completely smitten with her right from the get go. Like it's love for sight for him. So he's trying to like get in her good graces essentially. It's a great start to a great series. I love this one. The hero is very much in denial about his injury and accessibility and his pain, but the heroine like helps him with his acceptance and kind of helps him also with like physical therapy aspects, which is so cool in a historical time period. Anyway, so you have it. Those are 10 romance books with mobility aid users. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And also please leave recommendations down below for characters who are also mobility aid users. I would love to read those. And if you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me a purple heart emoji in the comment section down below or any purple related emoji, anything purple. It's fine with me. Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.